Welcome to High Infidelity. The best cheating videos on YouTube. If you enjoy this content, remember to subscribe and turn on notifications. Now let's get into the video. I 40 female, cheated on my husband, 42 male of 14 years a few months ago. I am sorry for what I did, but I have no idea what he thinks, and he won't speak to me. I'm well aware that I'm the bad guy from the get-go, and I get that, but allow me to clarify the situation. I love my husband. People will tell you that I don't because of what I've done, but I really believe it to be true. It was a mistake on my part. I had a brief romance with a mutual friend that lasted just a few weeks. It wasn't even a month before my husband came home from work for his lunch break and realized what had happened to us. Because he's never done it before, I'm thinking he was a little skeptical. Despite the fact that we weren't doing anything, we were in bed together so that he could figure it out. I recognize that what I did was wrong, and I recognize how much misery I caused my husband as well. Not even the most heartfelt apology could make up for my sorrow. He left the house and didn't come back until it was really late in the evening. I attempted to reach him, but he did not respond to my calls. The next morning, I saw his side of the bed was occupied, but he had gotten out of bed before me. I discovered him in the kitchen and attempted to apologize, but he refused. Instead, he just inquired as to how long I'd been with Isaac, our friend, and a flood of additional inquiries as to when, how it started, and so on and so forth. As soon as he finished, he walked away, saying, enough. I'm not sure where he went that day, but he returned late that night to tell me about it. Isaac was the last person I saw for a long time. After then, he never brought up the subject of the affair again. Immediately after the dispute, he started acting in a cold and distant way, which is typical of most individuals. He was not loving, nice, angry, or passionate in any way. He only communicated with me when it was absolutely necessary to do so. We were less than a month away from our anniversary, so I figured he was waiting for that day to arrive before proceeding with the divorce proceedings. Despite my efforts, the anniversary passed without incident, and he treated me to an uncomfortable supper which was the end of it. After seven months, he hasn't said anything about how he came across us or what he did to us. Occasionally, I bring it up in order to address it and have closure, but he always shuts me down and remains depressed for the rest of the day. He doesn't act in the same manner around me as he used to, but he is cordial and even nice at times. As a result, we've stopped having relations, and he just kisses me goodbye before going for work. On the whole, I'm at a loss on what to do next. I'm completely baffled by what's going on. I'm not certain he wants to leave me, but I'm starting to have second thoughts. I am fully aware that I made a horrible mistake, and I would fully understand if my husband want a divorce, which I do not. What I find difficult to fathom is his laid-back attitude toward life. I'm not sure whether he still has feelings for me. I'm well conscious of the fact that what I did was awful. This is something I don't want to happen to him, and I'll never do it again. Attempting to communicate with him about what happened, apologize, or find a solution to alleviate his distress, on the other hand, results in his walking away. My mind is blank as to what to do next, and I'm not sure what to make of the situation. Story 2. My wife of 12 years just got herpes. I'm still in a state of shock and have no idea what I'm thinking or feeling. But, in order to convey a complete picture, I need to go into further depth, so here we go. My wife and I enjoy a wonderful life together. We have a number of fetishes, as well as a large collection of toys and a regular schedule of encounters. She started asking me about a year ago whether I would be interested in expanding our relationship and exploring the possibility of playing with other people. It took a long time and much deliberation but we eventually came up with a set of rules and opened it up for some playtime. This occurred somewhere around the middle of April. Due to the fact that my wife was specifically looking for a more dominant man than myself at the time, I offered her permission to meet up with other men for play, as long as there was no contact involved, such as ropes and the like. This was done with the premise that we'd see how things went and then maybe open it up to later if she couldn't find a dominant who was a good match for her with that restriction in mind. We'd also meet up with and play with another couple to get me used to the thought of sharing her with someone else. It was in early April that we played with another couple who had dom experience, 
and we've since played with them twice more. In the first week after receiving my approval, she met with one person for impact play, another for coffee to get a feel for him, and scheduled two other meetings, one of which was with someone she worked with. We were both caught away by the fact that she was thinking about people she knew at the same time as she was thinking about the large number of people with whom she was engaging so quickly. As a result, we discussed it and agreed to play with the other couple for the time being. It was too fast for me and hurt me too much. It turns out that she met up with someone for a session and then was convinced to give him after a little prodding around two weeks before to our agreement or after we called it off. She doesn't recall exactly when, just that she realized it was a horrible situation. She was devastated and didn't meet with anybody again after that. She also deleted all of her online information from the dating websites she was using, and she chose not to tell me about her experience. When she went to the doctor last week, she was asked whether she had participated in activity with anybody other than her husband, and she was then exposed to an STD test as a result of the inquiry. She discovered yesterday that she had herpes types 1 and 2 and that she had been infected with them. Because we were babysitting, she didn't tell me until after work tonight that she was pregnant. I'm still reeling from the experience and have no clue what I want to do with my life at this moment. She was distressed and apologetic. She had been suffering from a severe cold for many months and was in tears as a result of it. While I have promised her that I would not forsake her for a and I do not believe that I would do so, I am apprehensive that I may get unhappy in the future, thinking that she may betray my trust in her once again. I was quite disappointed in her, despite the fact that I know she still loves me, and that this was not about her falling in love with someone else or anything like that, since it was a significant breach of trust on her behalf. I'm not sure where I should turn for assistance with this. The health problems that mock wife was experiencing forced us to relocate across the nation some years ago. My wife and I are both keen gamers who tend to be more reclusive when we are out in nature. Even though I've always had a huge number of friends, I haven't developed any close enough acquaintances in this nation with whom I would feel comfortable discussing this. For the same reason that my friends who I haven't talked to in a long time have become distant and have ignored my previous attempts to reconnect with them, I will not be phoning any of my friends in the near future. Aside from that, I don't want to contact my brothers and sisters because I don't want them to find out that my wife was having an extramarital affair with another guy while I was gone. So yeah, I'm having a horrible day and I'm not sure what to do about it, if anything at all, to make it better. Neither of us had any expectation that she would be unfaithful to me and when we spoke about seeing other people, STD were the major source of concern for us both. I want to schedule my own exams as soon as I get the chance. We reside in the same home as each other, but we do not have children. For the time being, the only thing that I can manage to think about is all of the what-ifs that may occur in the future. What is the value of living with the continual fear of contracting herpes if I do not have it at the moment? Is it feasible for me to continue to put my faith in her in the foreseeable future? I still care for her and I'm certain that we'll be able to work through this, but I'm sorry about the situation. Without making this message any longer, this is probably all that is necessary to say, but I felt compelled to voice my ideas anyway. Greetings and kindly accept my apologies for any errors that may have occurred during the presentation.